Caroline Staring up the road Pray to God I see at last I made it down the course 17 hours Picking me a bouquet and dogwood flies And I'm hoping for Riley I can see my baby tonight So rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel Rock me, mama, hit it where you feel Mama, rock me Rock me, mama, like the wind and the rain Rock me, mama, like a southbound train Mama, rock me From the cold off of New England I was born to be a fiddler in an old time Stream band, my baby plays a guitar I pick a banjo now Born on country winners keep a getting me down Lost my money playing vocals so I had to walk my name But it ain't a turning back to living that whole life no more so ride me, mama, like a wagon wheel. Ride me, mama, any way you feel. Oh, hey, mama, ride me. Ride me, mama, like the wind and the rain. Ride me, mama, like a southbound train. Hey, mama, ride me. Walking through the south, out of rowing over Got a truck around a Philly and a nice long tour But he's a headed west from the Cumberland Gap To Johnson City, a Tennessee Oh God, I gotta move on me for the sun I hear my baby calling my name and I know that she's the only one And if I die in Raleigh, at least I will die free So I'm me, mama, like a wagon Rock me, mama, hit away with me Hey, mama, rock me oh, Rock me, mama, like the wind and the rain Rock me, mama, like a southbound train Hey, mama, rock me oh, Rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel Rock me, mama, hit it Mama, rock me Rock me, mama, like the wind and the rain Rock me, mama, like a southbound train Mama, rock me You rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel Rock me, mama, hit away Mama, rock me You rock me, mama, like the wind and the rain You rock me, mama, like a southbound train Hey, mama, rock me, rock me Morning and welcome to Riverwood Church. Let's all stand and worship together. Life begins and is in the dust you 
fall And they come as air And the mouse is through And fear is the same crowds who are up in here Unstoppable God lets your glory go all in all The impossible things in your name they shall be done Freedom conquered on a chase undone Sin defeated Jesus is overcome Mercy triumph when the third saints on Darkness was denied when the storm was gone Unstoppable God let your glory go rolling on Impossible things in your name that shall be done Unstoppable God, let your glory go rolling on. The impossible things in your name they shall be done. Nothing shall. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable We shall show grace forevermore Jesus our God unstoppable Nothing shall be impossible Your kingdom reigns unstoppable We shall show grace forevermore Jesus our God unstoppable Nothing shall be impossible your kingdom reigns unstoppable We'll shout your praise forevermore Jesus our God unstoppable oh. Unstoppable God let your glory go all in all Impossible things in your name that shall be done. Unstoppable God, let your glory go all in all. Impossible things in your name that shall be done. Unstoppable God, let your glory go all in all. Impossible things in your name. Shall be done. Unstoppable God, let your glory go all in all. The impossible things in your name that shall be done. I believe that you are my fortress 
You are my portion. You are my hiding place. I believe through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance. I believe that you are my fortress. You are my portion. You are my hiding place I believe you are the way The truth The light I believe you are the way The truth The light I believe every day, every promise, every breath I take. I believe that you are provider, you are protector, you are the one I love. I believe you are the way. The truth, the light, I believe you are the way, the truth, the light, I believe you are. It's a new horizon And I'm set on you When you meet me here today With mercy set anew All my fears and doubts They can all come to Because they can't stay long When I'm here with you And it's a new horizon And I'm set on you can't you meet me here today with mercy standing through oh, all my fears and doubts? They can all come to because they can't stay long. I believe you are the way, the truth, the light. I believe you are. The way, the truth, the light. Oh, I believe you are the way, the truth, the light. I believe you are the way, the truth. The light, oh, I believe you are. You may be seated. Well, good morning. Welcome to Riverwoods Church Online, a live streaming service. Glad that you are joining with us today. I want to ask you to do just a couple things. If you're there on YouTube, uh, if you've gone to that and subscribed to our channel, that's the easiest way to find us. Uh, just give us a shout out. Let us know that you're watching, and uh, we'll be glad uh, for you to do that. Uh, also, if you've uh, went to Facebook and joined us there, wonderful. Uh, also, one other place, if you've gone to the Uversion app, uh, and found us there at the events. You can follow along with the notes on that. If you have the Uversion app, I want to show you how to do that. Just open up your phone, uh, click on that uh, Bible app that you have, and then go down to events, and then search Riverwoods Church, and it'll come up, uh, and it'll show a little screen there, and then click on it, uh, and it opens it up. It's today's uh, titles on there. Uh, how to give your all where you're at. 
Uh, you can watch online from there. Our website is there. I don't know why this is not the top. Maybe that's the way they set it up. But if you go all the way to the bottom, there's a place where you can uh, give, whether you know this or not. Uh, expenses still uh, carry on around here. So I just want to walk you through that. I'm going to click on the little Give app. And it'll ask you to open it up like in your Chrome or Edge or something of that nature. And when you get there, it's our easy time. Uh, you can choose a fund, which I'm just going to call the general uh, budget fund and put in the amount uh, and uh, putting that in now. Uh, you can make it reoccurring if your pay is uh, regular every week. Uh, that's fine. Then it asks for your name on the card, which I have mine uh, saved, and so it automatically fills every bit of that uh, in for me, uh, except for the uh, little security code on the back, and I'll put that in. There we go. Billing information, uh, which mine I have saved in my phone. The rest of that's there. Uh, and then, boom, just hit submit. Uh, and let's uh, see if it worked. I think it popped it down. Boom, there we go. All right. Uh, I've given my tithe and offering uh, today. Uh, if your email address is there, you'll get one that you have received that. So thank you for joining. A couple of announcements that we do want to make. You're going to want to listen pretty close. Uh, Splash Children's Ministry. Uh, if you have children, uh, this is Palm Sunday. And so I was instructed to let you know you need to get some kind of greenery, put it on your mailbox, put it on your door, do something of that nature. And then she wants you to make a little video of where you're uh, like you're welcoming Jesus, like when he rode in uh, on the donkey. And so I uh, want you to pay, post that to our Facebook page uh, uh, after you make it this week, give your children something to do. Uh, man, it was great when they went and they egged the children from Splash Children's Ministry. Uh, we had some other people to call us that saw that that was done, and we went and did that for them as well, not even connected with Riverwoods Church. So uh, if you know somebody that you'd like for that to happen for this week, get in touch with the office tomorrow uh, or sometime this week, uh, 270 252 real 270 252 real uh, 7325 is what that is and uh, we would love to bless them this week uh, man next Sunday's Easter and the governor has allowed for drive-in services and things of that nature and so we are going to do a drive-in service somewhere we haven't decided where uh, just yet, we thought we'd just get on top of this building and do it uh, here for all around town, but you just don't know how hard it is to get on top uh, of this building. There's no easy way up there. If we can figure out a way uh, to do it, we may do that and let y'all park. We'll have somebody to back you in up the street up here uh, rather than uh, pull in. And that way you can uh, watch. I don't know where we're going to do it how we're going to do it, uh, but if at all possible, we will do a drive-in Easter service next Sunday. You know, I find it kind of amazing. There are a few people that we've given permission to be here, uh, and they're not here, and then we've got all of you that's watching us that would love to have the opportunity uh, to be here if you just could. So next Sunday, uh, you will have your opportunity to join with us, if at all possible, in a drive-in service. Uh, these are unique times, strange times. Uh, just keep praying that somehow God will use this. Uh, hope that you're getting a little more quiet time, a little more family time. You know, the sad thing is for my life, uh, outside of being around the church with some functions and activities and corporate worship and life groups, my life's pretty well much the same. I've been going to work, been going, coming home. Uh, uh, Carolyn's been cooking a little bit more, uh, and that's always good. She's a pretty good cook and, and that, and we don't get to go out and eat. I kind of miss that. Uh, we enjoy going out to eat, but uh, uh, my life... Just so you know, it is so uh, fantastic that it hadn't changed hardly uh, much at all. I miss y'all, uh, miss being here. I know you'd like to be here to shout and clap and say amen 
uh, you can do that while you're at home. I'm just wondering when Lakin says, you know, let's stand and worship, do you stand at home? Uh, when he says you can be seated, are you seated when he, uh, when he says that? We're carrying on like normal around here. Uh, we hope that you're carrying on. So, you know, you can say amen uh, on YouTube. Um, that, you can make comments there. And so uh, join in with us, sing out. We're going to have a great time worshiping uh, the Lord today. Thank you for joining us. Uh, next week, get somebody to come and drive in and be at the service with us, all right? Uh, we're going to stand again, and we're going to worship a little bit more, all right? <laughs> sing out. <laughs> Well, well, well.
Well, here we are one week uh, from Easter, uh, Palm Sunday, and I'm going to do something very uh, probably uh, uncharacteristic of this time of year. I'm going to have you to turn to Matthew in chapter 2, 
Uh, I'm going to use a little bit of a Christmas story the Sunday before Easter. Somebody's like, Brother Darren, you've lost your mind. You're six months off. Well, uh, really the original title was a hashtag, is your yes on the, you know, the uh, rest of the phrase. Uh, and I'm not preaching that today. We're going to do the hashtag messages when we get back together uh, so that you can work on your bingo cards. Uh, maybe somebody can uh, do that. If you're new to watching us, you don't know a bit what I'm talking about. Um, but those who have been around do. We have some bingo cards. When I uh, mention a certain phrase or title that we've used over the last uh, 11 years, uh, you can check that off and they have cards and they're random. Uh, but I'm still kind of the same content today. And so you'll get a couple of, of these if you, uh, when the, the story that we're reading is when the Magi came from the east. If you remember when uh, Daniel uh, was in uh, captivity and taken, these are the same people that he had learned from. And uh, he knew the story that there would be a child that would be born because they taught him. They knew the prophecies. Uh, they, they knew uh, the, the scripture, the star would appear, the baby would be born, a virgin would give forth a child and it would be in Bethlehem. And so the wise men are coming from the east. They stop by, they see Herod. Herod tells them, if you find the child, send me word back where he's at. I want to come and worship him also. That's not really what Herod wanted to do. What Herod wanted to do was to kill the child because what? He was afraid that he would unseat him as the king. And so their goal is, is to find the child and they got there. That's what their goal was, to find him. And when they got there, you know what they did? They worshiped him. They brought him gifts. Now, something that you need to understand, we've all been to the Christmas plays and those things, and uh, Jesus is in a, a stable there, and the star comes, and the wise men come, but that's really probably not uh, historically correct, uh, because by the time these magi get there, these wise men from the east get there, Jesus is about two years of age. And so they show up. It took them a while to get there, and they brought gifts. And so what this shows is when they came to worship him and they brought gifts is that Jesus was superior to them to give gifts to a newborn king. Go over to the book of Romans uh, uh, in a moment, and we're going to get there uh, in chapter 12. But look, look at this. Not only did they get there, but what did they do when they got there? Now, we grew up around these stories, didn't we? We know these stories. I know a little bit, but here's the question. Not where did we start from, but what are we going to do when we get there? So listen to this in Matthew 2.11. And they came into the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. And opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Three unique gifts, three different gifts. And these were three big gifts. These weren't inexpensive gifts. These were expensive gifts, gold. Gold is what? A great value. It is a great treasure. It's fit for royalty. You see, I think they knew that one day this child would rule everything. They traveled by Herod. They knew that he had killed the children. And so when they show up, they don't just show up with themselves. They show up with gifts. Number one, gold. The second one is frankincense. That's a gift that a priest would use. In fact, it is incense. It's frankincense. It's what they would put in that golden censer and laver, and they would light it, and they would have incense when they did their ceremonies. Uh, you're like, why would they give this gift to a child? Well, here's why, is that deep down, they knew that life had more meaning and value 
than just him being a child. And then the last one's myrrh, that gift of myrrh. Myrrh (laughs) was something that they used in preparation for death. It was kind of used as an embalming fluid during that time, not really for a child. And so what do we say about these gifts? You see, I think that they knew that this child was born to die. Jesus Christ came to die. At a little past 33 years of age, he died for you and me. It's a great story. But it's not for us to have something to know, it's for us to have something to do and to do with. When you get to the place, uh, when you get to what does he want from you, you have to answer that question. Ultimately, God does God want from you. You see, when you're born, you get a social security number, it shows your existence But what about your wants, your desires, your passions? What do you have in life? If your view of God, if your understanding of God uh, is whatever it is, your view is it will change how you react. If you think that God's will for your life is for you to be good, uh, for you to treat your neighbors right, for you to be moral, for you to go to church occasionally and uh, drop a little something in the offering bucket every now and then. And if you think that that's what God wants and that's all that he wants from you, your view of what to do is different than somebody who has a different view of God. If your understanding of God is that he knows everything about you, intimately, acquainted with you. He knows the hairs on your head. He knows the number that falls. He knows you're getting up and you're lying down. He knows you're going out and you're coming in. He knows what you're going to say even before you speak. If your view of what God wants from your life is that, it's different. If you understand that you're not here by accident, that God created you uniquely, your view of what God wants you to do is different than somebody who is very casual in their view of God. Paul, man, Paul was a bad guy, wasn't he? Uh, He went around persecuting the church, but after he met Christ, it was somewhat different. Romans 12, 1 Here's what it says, therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your, what, reasonable act of worship or spiritual act of worship. And so your understanding is all that God wants from me is all of me. All that God wants from me is all of me. He doesn't want some of me. He doesn't just want a part of me. He doesn't want a portion of me. God wants all of me. That changes your view of things. The message uh, reads this way of Romans 12.1. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday, ordinary life You're sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. You see, there's something that we can learn uh, during this pandemic, this crisis that we're in, is that really our spiritual act of worship is not something that we do on Sunday. When you truly worship God, you worship Him seven days a week, all of your life. You see, here's what we've been, we've been taught is that uh, what we do is we go to church, and then we live our life outside of that. No, not really. Uh, what we're supposed to do is uh, what we are on Sunday is what we're supposed to be on Monday, and we're to worship Him all the time. 
And so we have a unique opportunity to begin to worship the Lord the way he wants to because we can't come together corporately. Oh yeah, I know we're watching online, we're, we're streaming, you're viewing. Uh, listen, there's nothing, uh, listen, he encourages assembling together. And it's encouraging to get together and worship God with one another. I mean, it's, it's the highlight of my week, no doubt. But I want you to know something, but if that's all that you have, you're missing out. Because God wants you to worship him daily. He wants you to pray. He wants you to sing songs. He wants you to read the word. He wants you to what? do those simple acts of worship. And here's what we've got to start doing is we've got to start learning that being a Christian is not something that we do on Sunday. It's something that we live. God wants all of us. Let me read that from the message again, Romans 12, 1. It says, so here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday, ordinary, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Basically what he's saying is, says, God hears me. I don't have gold. I don't have frankincense. I don't have myrrh. But here's all of me. God says, I know you, I made you, and I want you. I want you. So if you're with somebody else uh, worshiping today, I want you to turn to them and tell them God wants you. Yeah, yeah. He wants you. We've been using some banking and real estate illustrations lately. Let's just use an illustration. Let's say you're in the market for a house and uh, uh, you find one that you want to buy and so you make an offer and the person says, yes, I'm, I'm good with that offer, but said, I have one request, said, oh, I want to keep a room in the basement. You're going to be like, no, I, uh, I'm buying all the house. Also, all the rooms in the basement, you're going to move out. Well, listen, that's what God wants to do. You, you want me to tell you what we want to do? For sometimes what we want to do is we want to what, surrender our life to the Lord, and then we want to keep some of it back for ourselves. We're like, okay, God, you can have it all except for this area, all except for this room, all except for my money, all except for a big portion of my time. You can have it all but this. No, that's not what God wants. What God wants is all of you. Just like if you buy a house, you want all of it. And by the way, you have been purchased. If you've been listening as we've been teaching in the book of Hebrews, it surely is plain to you by now that you have been redeemed, purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. You became a child of God. And so what you belong to him. You say, uh, are you giving God everything? Giving him everything. So how can I worship Jesus? If we're talking about spiritual act of worship, living a life of worship, you're like, Brother Darren, I can't come to church. How can I do that? Uh, so how can I worship Jesus in my current location? Uh, some of you are in a very uh, uh, different time. Uh, kids are around more. Uh, I know you're like... you. you, you Kids hate school, and you're like decided you love school as a parent. Uh, Amen. Uh, And I really started to teach today, uh, uh, don't let raising your kids raise your blood pressure. (laughs) Uh, I thought about sharing that uh, today. Uh, If we don't get back to church here before too long, I think I'll try to uh, do that so that I can help uh, you parents. But how can you worship Jesus in your current location, situation. First of all, love my neighbor. In James 2.8, if you really keep this royal law found in Scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. Love my neighbor. And that doesn't necessarily just mean the person across the street. It may mean others. Carol and I got to love our neighbors when they'd messaged us on Facebook and had seen us Egg, one of the 
uh, people coming to our church and their children and saw how much fun they had and saw the sign in their yard and contacted us and wanted to know if we'd do that for them. And so Carol and I, we loaded everything up and we went over there, which she'd been doing the last couple of days, uh, and put the eggs and that in the, in the yard and uh, got to bless somebody else, loving our neighbor. In fact, if you know somebody wants us to do that, we will do it for them this week between now and Easter. You see, that's the goal. Love your life. You, you, you do understand that when, when you went through Discover Riverwoods, we talked about a couple of scriptures uh, that we build everything off of, and, and that is uh, the great uh, command and the great commission. The great command is love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength, and love thy neighbor as yourself. And so you've got to understand that God left us here to influence others. That's what he wants to do. Even in this difficult time, you may know somebody that's older, maybe not in good health, and they're somewhat at risk and somewhat vulnerable, and we've put that out there. If somebody uh, needs some help like that that's vulnerable, we will be glad to help them. But uh, you may know somebody like that, and you can help them. Go to the grocery for them. Uh, help them out. Amen? Uh, so what? He left us here to influence others. Uh, no matter where we are or what we do, we're to love others. God came to earth. He loved us. He came with skin on. That's what Jesus is. Is God with skin on. You're like, Brother Darren, I don't know my... Bible enough to do that. You don't have to know your Bible at all to love your neighbor. Let me ask you something. Do you love yourself? We, uh, uh, we're doing something here uh, not long ago when we, uh, the Jumanji movie, you know, you hit here and it pops up and tells you what your strengths are. Uh, we went over on Snake Road and I Oh, I don't get too close to them. I say, if you pop me, mine says, uh, one of my strengths is high self-preservation. Brian Trunnell's with us. If he did this, had one of his weaknesses, he says, uh, zero self-preservation. <laughs> and foolish. <laughs> Amen. Uh, he wanted to pick up a cotton mouth. No, no, no. You don't pick up a cotton mouth. Amen. But, but most people, we don't have to teach you how to love yourself. Most people, if you did like this, it'd be lover of self. Do you know how to love yourself? Some people, oh, they have such low self-esteem. I know they don't know how to love themselves, but they really uh, love themselves. Every now and then, you know, when you're having a bad day, you pull in, you get, uh, you know, uh, uh, a frappuccino somewhere, or you get a blizzard, or you get a shake, or you go get some donuts, or you go, you know, all that stuff sweet, you know, uh, uh, some chocolate, or other things that you go get. Why? Because you're treating yourself. You know how to love yourself. You know what? Sometimes somebody else might like a, a blizzard. Or a frappuccino, or some chocolate, or some donuts. Yeah. You say, Brother Aaron, that's so simple. It is. It's very simple. But love your neighbor. Secondly, lift up my prayers. Lift up my prayers. Prayers are incense. The greatest way to show your trust in God, faith in God, is that you pray. That shows your trust in him, your dependence in him, not coming to church. What praying for your children, praying for your marriages, praying about your job, praying about your circumstances, praying about your health, praying about revival and spiritual awakening coming. The greatest way to show that we trust God is when we pray. You're like, brother, I don't know how to pray. All you got to do is tell him what's on your heart. Just talk to him. You don't have to contort your face. You don't have to talk like, oh, my gracious heavenly father. 
I come today in such humble spirit and I bestow you great. No. Just talk to him like you would uh, anybody else. You know, you ever met those people that uh, when they pray, it just changes everything about them. Oh, God. They don't talk that way. You don't go down to the grocery store, especially, you know, since uh, uh, the, the, there was a shortage on bread. I need some bread. No. Uh, you, you don't talk that way. I need some toilet paper. Uh, no. Uh, we, don't, we don't do that, do we? Uh, I hope you're laughing at home. The, the few that are here are about to fall out in the aisle right now. And the reason they are is because they know I'm telling the truth. Can I tell you that when somebody prays that way publicly, it tells me that they don't pray a whole lot privately. And listen, whenever you do that, you're not heard for your much speaking or your eloquent speech is what the Word of God says. Just talk to God like you would anybody else. Now sometimes I get real passionate when I pray. Um, I get passionate when I preach sometimes, but, but here's the thing that it is. He cares. Your prayers never go unheard. You're like, God, I can't do this. I can't bear this. I can't make it through this. I don't know anything to do but pray. When you don't know anything to do but pray, you're in a good place to have the activity of God in your life. Revelation 5, 8, and said, when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders four, fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. God's gathering up your prayers. Do you know that? You know what the Bible, you know what the Bible says? That when you weep before God is that he's catching your tears. There's not a tear that falls from your eye that God doesn't know about it. In fact, here's what the Bible says, is that when you pray over lost people that don't know the Lord, he's going to catch your tears, and when you've gone to talk to them, he's collecting the dust that you stirred from your feet, and if they don't come to know him as their Lord and Savior, here's what he says he's going to do. One of these days, he's going to dump it out before them as a testimony against them. Wow. If you're listening to me today and you don't know Christ as your Savior, the Scripture says people that have prayed for you and weep for you to come to know Christ, that those are going to be poured out before you someday as a testimony against you. So what do we need to do? We need to lift up prayers. Yeah, we need to pray for lost people. We have uh, a little more time than normal now. So what do we need to do? Love my neighbor, lift up my prayers, and then the last thing is let God have his way. And I'm done. You say, what do you mean let God have his way? It's where you stand before him and you say, okay, God, here's me. Here I am. I'm before you, I'm flawed, I'm messed up, don't have much ability, but all the ability that I have, all of my talents I have, all the potential I have is yours. I'm giving it to you. Let God have his way. Galatians 2.20, he said, I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. When Jesus Christ died, it would have all been for you. It would have all been for me. It would have all been for us individually. He gave all he had for us. You know what he asked us to do is to give all of you in return. You know what? He thinks of you besides Sundays. He thinks of you every day. If you get this, if you understand what I'm teaching you about today, it will change your life. You know what the world's full of? It's what I call nominal Christians. They know the name of Jesus. 
They go to church occasionally, try to live a good moral life. Can I tell you something? God doesn't want just part of you. He wants all of us. He wants all of me. He wants all of you. And you know where it starts with? It starts with accepting Christ as your Savior. If you're here and watching, listening today, and you don't know Christ, you can. You say, Brother Darren, how can I know Christ? Well, first of all, you have to accept Him as your Lord and Savior. And for that to happen, it has to be a spiritual birth. God has to be involved. You say, how do I know if God's involved? It's like he's got a string tied around your heart, and he's got a hold of the other end of the string, and he's pulling you to him right now. That's called conviction. The Bible said that when the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. That means you realize you're a sinner. You realize because of your sin, you won't go to heaven You deserve to spend eternity separated from God in what the Bible calls hell. And you realize that judgment's to come and that you can't save yourself. You're not good enough. You want me to tell you how you come to understand that? The Holy Spirit of God is working in your life. If you're watching today and you don't know Christ, won't you come to Christ? You're like, I don't know how. Well, if he's tugging at your heart today, whispering in your ear, uh, tugging at you in any way, Here's how you do it. You do it by prayer. It's that simple. So I want you to pray this prayer with me. Dear Father, I come today. I know I'm a sinner. I know because of my sin that I'm separated from you. But Lord Jesus, I believe that you came. Born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, was crucified on the cross at Calvary, was buried and rose again from the dead ascended on high and still alive today. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Change my heart. Change my life. Save my soul. Lord Jesus, give me a fresh start. Give me a brand new beginning. You be my leader. I'll be your follower. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Now help me to live for you. In your name I pray. If you prayed that prayer today for the first time, listen, we have some material we would like to send you and give you. It's called a fresh start. It's your early steps that you need to make as a follower of Christ. You can go to Riverwoods Church Facebook page and you can message us. Uh, We will get that and give us your address. We would love to celebrate with you. In fact, if you're watching right now, just put on there, I just prayed to receive Christ. Others will rejoice with you. We would love to rejoice with you. Love to help you in your new walk with the Lord. Stay tuned for information in the future about what we're going to do on Easter Sunday. As soon as we know something, we will let you know. All right. Thank you for joining us today. Amen. You might just want to sing with us here as we kind of roll this thing out this morning. Go ahead and stand again, as Lakin would say, and let's sing a little.
the way, the truth, the light. I believe you are the way, the truth, the light. I believe whoever we bless, whoever we Every breath I take And I believe that you are provider And you are protector You are the one I love and I believe you are the way The truth The light I believe you are the way, the truth, the lie. I believe you are. It's a new horizon. And I'm set on you And you meet me here today With mercy's hallelujah All my fears and doubts They can all come to Because they can't stay alone When I'm here with you There's a new horizon And I'm set on you can't you meet me here today with mercy, hallelujah? All my fears and doubts, they can all come to because they can't stay long when I'm here with you. The way, the truth, the light, I believe you are. The way, the truth, the light, I believe you are the way, the truth, the light, I believe you are the way, the truth. You are dismissed.